Hi guys, welcome to Make2. This is a review of LEGO Set 10242, the Mini Cooper Mark 7. It was released in 2014 with 1077 pieces and cost $100. And I think this if this was a Star Wars set or a DC set uh, in, in that theme released like this, it would have been called a USC a, um, Ultimate Collector Series Edition because this really is the absolute luxury version of a Lego set for uh, something like a car. Compared to a minifig, you can see um, it's dwarfed in scale by this car. This is, I think, 14 studs wide, 20 odd, 23, 4 studs uh, down, and obviously pretty tall. And it's just the level of care and attention that went into virtually everything, I think, is just amazing. So I'm going to give you a quick spin of everything on the car. Then I'm going to show you um, some of the main features and the close-up of some particular little features just to highlight some of the attention to detail that went into this set. As you can see, this set is heavy with racing green. It's got some beautiful handlebars, it's flute printing along the sides, these big puffy wheels with these wonderful hubcaps. Mini Cooper sign there, that was a sticker. Hood, um, sort of the, the trunk there, same size along. You can get a hint inside and see those lovely upholstered seats. Then here you have the racing, or this is British racing green with white, or British green with white racing stripes down. The bonnet opens and we'll come to all those features. In a second, you can see the aerial on top for the radio. So let's run through the side features first. The doors open very smoothly. Inside, you can see this wonderful tan paneling, which I think is beautiful. The door on the outside, this is an inverted um, or, or built on the side ice skate for minifigures. One of my bugbears of this set, it's very, very minor. But this piece here, this one by one Technic with a hole piece, it's great for attaching the handlebar on the outside. The bad news is that it's in black. I don't know why, given the, the level of dark green they went for the rest of the set, why they could, if they could have just got this piece in dark green, the door would have looked perfect. As it is, it kind of feels like they, if they'd done, I actually would have preferred a slightly different handle here, but keep, kept everything in the same color. I think it's the only part almost of the entire set that's in a different color and it stands out for that. From the front, you have this classic grill, wonderful use of headlights. You've got three different sets here. I'll show you a close-up of one. The bonnet opens and inside you can see the engine block. These are actually little teeth pieces, curved sort of teeth claw pieces, but it looks like they're the, you know, Pistons from the engine sort of going off into the distance. You can't see the end of them, but it gives this wonderful sense uh, of continuation outside of the model. You can see on the, the left of the screen these silver pieces, on the other side red. You can see at the back just different grills and these two lovely pieces there. A number plate. It comes with several different sticker options for the number plate, uh, license plate. I went for British, given I'm British, and this is a British car. Lots of silver. Is the final comment to say this bumper all in silver, these silver um, kind of Technic pieces, too long, um, all connected by pins inside, but really lovely, really sort of make the front pop. These are silver too, not quite as silvery as these, but these are still shiny pieces. These front headlights, I just want to show you how they're made. You can see there's a clip built on the side, then this is actually a plate a uh, piece or a shield piece on front of which is a dish and this just really clever little assembly just to get that so completely flush. I don't know how much time it took to do that but I'm, that's really impressive. And just while we're here you can see this gentle curve here and these inward curves here it's not quite accurate to the actual mini but it does just give that sense of curves uh, and just helps the lines to give a sense of bubbleness rather than just solid lines. At the rear here, you have the wonderful curve of the trunk, which as they do on minis, opens downwards. Again, another sticker here for the license plate. I think they've just captured the motion and curve wonderfully well. 
these pieces actually line up, they go completely vertical. Some very clever maths, I think, went in to get that working exactly like that. You can see also the front, another very similar to the front silver bumper. The exhaust right down here, brake lights on the right, and these sets of lights here, and this extra light. I think this might be the, uh, the, the petrol cap. If we open up the trunk, it reveals, as you may have seen online already, a wonderful full trunk. There's a picnic blanket, and I'll show you these set up shortly. There is a bottle of water for the picnic. And there is a really nicely done in dark red, red, brown, this wooden picnic basket, which is actually, uh, I think it's six studs by four. It's actually pretty big. It, it looks kind of small, but actually building, you think, well, it's actually, this is you know bigger than probably uh, significant portions of, of other Lego models. Inside, let me give you a look down into the guts of the thing. You can see there's a, a hook down here, and if we lift this up, there is a spare tire. Just as it would be in real life, this tire is one, hard to get to, and two, much narrower, just maybe show you here, much narrower than the actual wheels. But that's as it is. You're not supposed to drive for long on these, uh, and in it goes. Now you can't probably see, if I take the wheel out, you can see just back there, you can see that's an opening down to the um, the outside. This is There's some pins in there, and what that does, if I show you the underside quickly, that just puts this, which is a panel piece, which would normally be upright, again, it hooks that puts that onto its side so that there's enough space in the trunk to put that, put that spare tire. This is my first particularly special feature, which I think is really, really nice. So let's put that back. I just want to show you here how some of this was made. Just the level of building from every different angle that went into this. So this is just a, a simple little assembly to put on the lights which just covers up, it matches this curve, which is a normal stud going upwards side, and again, it helps match the curve of the trunk that opens here. Finally, we have the interior. You can see the checkered pattern, dark tan, light tan, and white on each of the chairs. You can see it at the back here, you can see, oops. But each chair can both be angled forward, and you can move the headrests, lots of adjustability. Once you move the seat forward, open the door, allows people to go in. And again, the same pattern repeated here. Not lent back here, this is all just straight angles, but they've still got the curve very nicely. And you've got space at the back for putting any maps or anything else. At the front of the car, you can see the grill piece here for the heater, black knob for opening the glove box, another ventilation here, console or printed piece here and just if you can get a look there you can see that the various styles at the front now many people have complained about the size of the steering wheel on there exactly right it's just way too big it may be there's just no space no clearance at all underneath for the person to sit it's completely oversized it's supposed to move a little bit to adjust it you can't at the side here you have a gear shift which is attached in a really clever way. It's got a, a ball pin, um, so you know, one used for creating creatures and stuff, attached to a sort of double clip with a space between. Really nice, you can move it, but you're so hampered by this wheel, it's really frustrating. Here you have the handbrake, which does move freely, but does get, yeah, you can just pass the steering wheel there, so that's a real shame. One detail that I wanted to highlight about the front windscreen it actually angles, this is it completely straight, it angles downwards, and they've just put a very, this is a, I think a, a minifig piece that one uses to attach things to their backs, so it's very much narrower than the plate, maybe it's a third of a plate high, half a plate high, and that's just uh, there to stop the angle and just control it. That's in dark brown, which is really nice, fits in with the rest of the console, just stops it. So I think that's wonderful how they've captured the perfect angle. Now if you attach the roof, the roof is perfectly flat. 
But given that this is angled, the part where the front of the roof touches the windscreen is actually lower than it would be if the windscreen was upright. Now they compensate for that by having these three hinge pieces at the front where the very front of them, the tip, you can just see the angle there, just that small bit of black that lifts up this front enough, the, um, the roof enough, so it's perfectly, lays perfectly flat on top. There's one little hole in the whole of the side panel of the car, right here, right down by the rear wheel, by these um, grille plates um, coming up. And it bothered me. As I was building it, I was thinking, why, why is there this gap? What is the reason uh, for the designer putting in this tiny gap? That actually is it's quite hard to do. You've got a, it studs on the side, obviously, and you're sort of building studs one way, then another way, then another way, and then you have this tiny gap. It's like, what's that for? And as you build up the rest of the model, it finally is quite near the end when it became apparent to me that the whole purpose of these little, this, having to have this little gap, not being able to fill it, to so see the various uses of plates and bricks all along the side was just to allow for this flush side panel. And these are plates. They could have done it differently. They could have had this just being the end of bricks. But they wanted to get this curve. And they wanted to get this curve on the inside as well and going through. So rather than doing it with bricks, they did it with plates on the side. And that allows the door to close perfectly. So this is, I think, half a plate width. And it just allows those hinges to work oh so smoothly. I think that is, that's the reason for that gap. Because I think, again, it shows the care and attention that went into this entire set. Now, one minor quibble is that these lines are perfectly straight. These lines do not quite match. They're both pressed in firmly, but some of these are all printed, and just some of the printing doesn't line up quite as smooth as it could. The other one on both these slope pieces and these at the back, there were stickers that have a bit of black on to show sort of the window continuing, because these windows are all supposed to be at an angle. With a, I left them off because they didn't look that they wouldn't look very good, and I wanted to keep it pure. I, I don't think it really matters. The stickers would have bothered me more than just having here a straight window. Here we have the picnic all set up. This is the now empty basket. Lovely curves to it though, I think, you know, all built on the side, these clip pieces uh, in the middle with these um, arm pieces and a, a, a long uh, axle bar between them, I think is really nice. Big bottle of water, two cups, which I think are almost certainly way too small for whoever would actually be able to fit in this car. Likewise, probably for the person who's actually can fit in the car, who's maybe yay big, a relatively small um, French loaf. They have a French loaf and a couple of pieces of cheese for one or two people to enjoy on their picnic. So that's it for my review of the Lego Mini Cooper Mark 7. I think it's a wonderfully detailed model with a huge amount of care and attention. To really impressive building techniques that I'd love to learn from, but I don't think I'm quite smart enough. Uh, I really enjoyed making it. I really enjoyed showing it to you. Um, there's only a tiny couple of quibbles that I've pointed out. But otherwise, this is perfect. And I think my, the next thing I'm going to do with this set is take it apart, separate, all, separate out all the pieces into different piles, and then build the model again. Because I had such a blast building it, and I learned, well, I tried to learn so much. I'd love to know what you think. So please do comment below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and feel free to subscribe to our channel because more videos are coming soon.